Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, I'm going to take a flight using the new working title GNS 430-530, and we're going to do an LPV approach in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you don't have the working title 430-530 installed yet, all you have to do is go to the marketplace, and in the top right corner, search for Garmin or working title, and you'll find the 430-530 right here. Just click on it and install it. It's completely free and available for both Xbox and PC. Once it's installed, any plane that you have that has a 430 or a 530 in it will have its software updated to use the working title software instead of the default software. If you're looking for a plane that has a 530 and 430 in it, go ahead and choose the DHC2 Beaver, which is included as part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator 40th Anniversary Edition. There's both a tail dragger and an amphibious model available. And once you load in, go ahead and look at the tablet on the right side of the cockpit and just change the avionics over to GPS if it's set in the analog radio mode. That'll change the analog radios out for a 530 and a 430. And also in this plane, there is a CAP 140 autopilot right here in the middle. For this flight, I'm actually gonna fly the Black Square Analog Caravan, which I'm really enjoying. And I'm also gonna use Navigraph charts to do my flight planning. I've already entered a flight plan here and used the auto route feature to choose the waypoints for me. Typically, I use something like skyvector.com because it's available to everyone if you're flying in the United States. You can go ahead and look up free charts and do flight planning on Skyvector. So check that out if you want. And if you can afford Navigraph 8, a subscription is totally worth it in my opinion. Before we jump in the plane and program this route into the 530-430, I just want to show you this route and explain something about how airways work. First of all, you can see our departure airport right here, which is Zero Hotel 1, and it goes down here to the southeast and then joins the Victor 132 airway. Now you can see that we enter at one waypoint called Discs, we cross a waypoint called Heron, and then we exit at a waypoint called Spelt. If you've ever used the G1000 NXI, you may know that you can use a feature called Load Airway, where you choose an airway, you choose an exit waypoint, and then it will automatically bring along every waypoint in between for you. If I chose an exit waypoint even further along the airway, it could potentially bring in dozens of waypoints like this. And the reason why this is so important is because at each waypoint along an airway, it may actually change course. So you can see on this airway, if we take it far enough, it's actually going to turn and face more to the north here. It's going to make a left-hand turn when passing this VOR. So what's important in the 530 and 430 is that you actually have to enter each of these waypoints along the airway manually. There is no load airways feature in the 530-430 that brings all those waypoints in for you. So let's hop back to the world map and just enter our route here. So I'm gonna put in zero hotel one as our departure. Kilo, Echo, Whiskey, Kilo. This is Newton City, this is our arrival. And up here in the top left, I'm gonna change from a VFR direct flight plan to choosing low altitude airways. Now this is a really quick way to get an IFR flight plan. And once you load in, you'll get IFR clearance with air traffic control. This is a really fast way to find a route if you don't want to use something like Skyvector or Navigraph. If you want to enter a custom route, but you don't want to deal with all the knob turning in the cockpit with the 530 and 430, you can always do it from the world map. Anytime you click on a waypoint in the top here, it'll just zoom to it and give you the option to remove it. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my flight plan that I got from Navigraph, but I'll do it in the world map. So you can do that by going to the bottom and hitting more and then opening the filters. So to do this, we have to reveal all of the RNAV fixes. So under navigation, I'm gonna turn on nav aids, that'll reveal all the VORs, and the fix and RNAV position report, that'll reveal all the RNAV waypoints. Now that I've done that, all I need to do is use the search box on the left, and I can enter any waypoint name. So I'm gonna enter disks and click it, that's gonna be our first waypoint. It'll automatically zoom in and pop open this menu, so you just click add. Make sure you've already put in the from and to airports at the top in order to do this. Now I'll type in Heron, click on that one, and then click add again. And then finally, put in the last waypoint, which is spelt, click the result. And now we have the flight plan that I got from Navigraph, but we don't have to do any knob turning inside the cockpit itself. This will transfer over into our avionics when we load in, either at the runway or at parking. 
This also works if you want to import a flight plan using the bottom menu. But for me, I'm just going to switch over to parking and only putting in the departure runway. I like to start cold and dark, and I like to program in the flight plan myself in the cockpit. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. You can do it whichever way you prefer. All right, so I've got the Grand Caravan started up here. This is the analog version that's available from Just Flight. I'll put a link to this in the description if you guys are interested in it. I'm just going to hit enter a couple of times to get through these initialization screens. Once that's done, I'm just going to hit the FPL button in the top. I'm going to do all the flight planning on the 530 because it's a larger screen. Enable the cursor knob, and I'm going to use keyboard entry mode to enter each of these waypoints. So 0, 1, each. And then when you're done, just click to turn keyboard mode off. I'll go ahead and show that again. Turn the middle knob, click the little keyboard entry icon, this little white icon, type in your waypoint. Then you can actually click anywhere on the entire screen to turn it off. But make sure you turn it off, otherwise you won't be able to click any other buttons. Now I'll hit enter, turn the enter knob again, enable keyboard entry mode. Heron is the third waypoint. Now if I click enter right here, see it's not doing anything. So that's why you have to turn the keyboard entry mode off first. So click the screen, then hit enter. All right, another waypoint, we have spelt, S-P-E-L-T. And finally, our destination airport, Kilo, Echo, Whiskey, Kilo. That's Newton and Kansas. And then hit enter. All right, now we have our whole flight plan in there. So what I'm going to do next is click flight plan and just make sure that the route looks correct. I always do this after entering the flight plan. So go ahead and zoom the map out. And it's definitely not right. So what did I do here? It looks like I put in one of the waypoints incorrectly. So let's go back to the flight plan screen. Oh, my departure is zero hotel one. I put in zero one hotel. So I'll turn on the cursor with it highlighted, hit clear to remove that waypoint and then hit enter to say yes. So now I need to insert a waypoint in the first position. I'm just going to highlight the top waypoint called discs because I want it to be the first waypoint, turn the inner cursor and now enter the correct waypoint zero hotel one. There we go. Joaquini in Kansas. This is right. So now I'll hit enter. So there is something a little weird if you change the departure airport like this. You can see at the top, it still says zero one hotel, and this on route section is here. I'm not worried about it, it's just a display thing. We can see if we look at the map that the route is correct, and our first leg is leaving zero hotel one and going to disks. So this looks right. I'll zoom the map out again to double check, and the route looks like what I expect. So we're good to go here. All right, because I have both a 530 and a 430 in here, you can see they synchronize their flight plans. So if I hit FPL on the 430, that entire flight plan is in there. Now when I'm taxiing, if I'm not using Navigraph or something like that, you can always zoom really far in. You can see a mini kind of faded taxiway diagram here to give you a little help with your bearings while you're on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this up on the little taxiway diagram. You know, it doesn't show us runway names for every airport. It also doesn't show us taxiway names at all, but it's just there to give you a little more situational awareness while you're taxiing. And now what I'm doing is setting my autopilot up to my climb and my cruise altitude. So I'm going to go up to 7,500 feet, a little VFR altitude here that I figured out using my Navigraph maps. All right, we're all lined up on the runway. I'm going to put the fuel condition to high idle, fuel boost to normal, and then I'm going to check my Heading indicator here, sync that up to straight ahead. Now over here on the GPS unit, I wanna make sure that we are not in VLOC mode. We're using a GPS flight plan, so I'll hit the CDI button to change it to GPS. And our first desired track is one, two, four. So in this plane, I need to update the course on my HSI to reflect that course of one, two, four. All right, now we're ready for departure. All right, so we've taken off and I've enabled autopilot. It's in heading mode, so it's just flying runway heading right now, and it's continuing our climb up to 7,500 feet. Now, this is something very important to know about how the working title autopilot works. If I engage nav mode, you'll notice the plane is not turning. Navigation mode is armed. That means it's on standby and ready to be used, but we're still actively in heading mode. So what I actually need to do is turn towards the course and get close to intercepting our intended course. Since I'm already using heading mode, I'm just gonna change my heading bug to intercept that course. So I'm turning us around to the right here. 
and I'm just pointed towards the side of the broken line, and that'll intercept what's shown as our magenta course here on the 530. Once we get close enough, you'll see navigation mode automatically activate. So now it says GPS. This is realistic arming criteria for GPS mode or nav mode in the autopilot. And it's something that the working title team included in the G1000 NXI. And now it's also here in the 530 430. All right, now I'm getting close to my destination, so I'm gonna enter our approach procedure. I'm gonna click on proc and then hit enter for select approach. And I wanna show you that when you choose an approach, in this case, I'll choose the RNAV runway 17, you can actually review the transition waypoints before you load one. If I look on the little map, I can see Gwyn is right here, kind of at the top, and it's gonna be in line with the final approach course. If I choose Jazra, I can see it's to the east of that. And then if I choose Rebly up here, I can see that it's to the west and I'm approaching from the west. So this is going to be a good transition point for me in the course that I'm flying. So now that I've chosen Rebly, I'm just going to hit enter. If I review the flight plan up here on the 530, I can go ahead and turn on the cursor and use the outer knob to scroll through all the waypoints you can see Rebly here is the initial approach fix, then Gwyn, then Agor is the final approach fix, and then finally runway 17. After that, we have our missed approach procedure, which goes to a waypoint called Spina and then holds there. Now I'm using Navigraph to pull up the approach plate. Once again, if you don't have Navigraph and you're flying in the United States in the simulator, go ahead and check out skyvector.com for an easy way to access the public FAA approach charts. If you want to learn in more detail about LPV and RNAV approaches, check the video linked in the description and in the top right right now. So I'm reviewing this chart to look at our final approach fix altitude, which is 3,200 feet. We're actually going to descend down to 3,200 before that, before we get to Gwyn. And this is an LPV approach, which means that we're going to get a GPS or WAS provided glide path down to the runway. What I'm going to do is use the, the VNAV screen here on the 530 to plan our descent down to that target altitude of 3,200 feet. I'll use the outer and inner knobs to set my target altitude of 3,200 feet and then press enter. Now I'll move over to the target position. I'm going to change four miles down to one mile. That'll give us a little padding to make sure we're down before the waypoint. And then for the waypoint, I'm going to choose Gwyn because I know I need to be down to 3,200 feet by the time we get to Gwyn. VSR stands for vertical speed required. So if we started descending right now, we would descend at 380 feet per minute to cross that position at that altitude. But I'm gonna change my VS profile to 800 feet per minute. And when I do that, I get our top of descent timer here. It says eight minutes. Now you can do this on the 430 as well. So if you wanna do that, go back to the navigation page group and then go to the very last page using the inner knob. You can see we have the same screen except we don't get that nice begin descent timer. So we just have to keep our eye on the vertical speed to know when to start the descent. Something else you can do is change these data fields on the 530 and 430. So on the map here in the corner, I have things like desired track, distance, ground speed. If I click on menu and then highlight change fields and press enter, it'll let me choose different data to show here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this desired track and I'm gonna do that by turning the inner knob. I'm gonna change it to this one, VSR, vertical speed required. Now I can monitor the vertical speed required from the VNAV page right here, and I can do that from my map instead. So all I have to do is keep my eye on this until it gets down to negative 800 feet per minute, which is the desired rate of descent that I'm gonna follow. Next, what I need to do is activate the approach. You can see I'm not headed to that waypoint Rebly yet. So all I have to do is press proc and then do activate approach. This sounds more complex than it actually is. Activate approach, all it really does is take the waypoint and do direct to like I can do with this button. So it's basically a shortcut to highlighting that waypoint and clicking direct to. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the one in the proc menu. So I hit proc, activate approach, enter. And that makes Rebly our current active waypoint. So it just draws a line from our current location to Rebly you can see we're turning to go direct Rebly right now. Because I changed my waypoint, the VNAV system has gotten a little bit confused. So I'm gonna go back into the VNAV screen. I can see the VSR in the top left is blank. 
So what I'm gonna do is go back to Gwyn here and choose it again. There we go. Now it's recalculated the descent. And because I waited a little bit, I actually need to descend at almost a thousand feet per minute now. So over on my autopilot, I'm gonna hit the Alt button and then I'm gonna hit down to go a thousand feet per minute descent, which is right around what the VSR says. Since I changed my 530 to show the VSR in the top left corner, I'm just keeping my eye on that. And as I see a change in 100 foot increments, so when it gets down to minus 900, I'll just reduce my rate of descent on my autopilot's vertical speed mode to match it. All right, I'm now making the final right turn here to line up with the final approach course. What we need to do is go over to our autopilot and arm approach mode. This brings up this text that says GS, so it's ready to capture the glide slope or glide path for vertical guidance. Because it's a GPS approach, we leave it in GPS mode. We do not change over to a LOC1 or a VLOC mode on our Garmin because we're not using a radio navigation aid like a localizer. So double checking the approach plate, we need to be at 3,200 feet to capture our glide path and our LPV minimums for this approach 1791, so call it 1800 feet. As we're getting closer and closer to the final approach fix, we just wanna keep an eye on our instruments for the glide path indicator. So right here, it's shown up on my HSI, this little yellow marker here. And on the CDI, it's the horizontal line that's moving down towards the middle. Once it gets down to the middle, what we wanna see is our autopilot change to activate glide slope mode. So the GS is armed right now and it's about to become active. All right, there it goes, we see GS now. So the first thing I wanna do is go and set my missed approach altitude, that's 3,600 feet. Because glide slope mode is active, I can change the selected altitude. It's still gonna be following the glide slope down, or in this case, the glide path. So I can freely change my selected altitude to my missed approach altitude. I have a visual of the runway already, so I don't need to worry about anything other than turning off the autopilot when we get to our minimums or whenever I'm comfortable. In this case, I'm gonna wait until we get to 1800 feet at our minimums to disengage the autopilot and then complete the landing. Something I ran into that you can see right now is that the glide path looks good on the HSI, but you can see the four red lights on the left side of the runway, that's our VASI. It's showing that we're too low. And if I look at the CDI actually, I can see that the glide path is way above us compared to the HSI. So I think I'm just running into maybe a bug with the analog caravan and the 530-430. So just keep in mind that you may run into issues like this as well as the 530 and 430 get implemented by each third party plane developer. So I'm just gonna complete this landing and taxi to parking. All right, so we've safely landed here at our destination. And the final thing I wanna talk about is how to execute a missed approach procedure with the 530 and 430. When we cross our missed approach point, in this case, it was the threshold of the runway, the GPS enters a suspend mode. So that means it's suspending the automatic sequencing or advancement to the next waypoint in the flight plan. In this case, that's the missed approach procedure. So to get it to continue that sequence and go to the missed approach waypoint, all I have to do is hit the OBS button under where it says suspend. Now here on the left, you can see it says missed approach. Each of these missed approach waypoints refers to the actual missed approach procedure that we can see in the chart. So it says to climb to 3,600 feet and then go directly to spin a and hold there. And that's what we see in our flight plan. And don't worry, the autopilot and the working title 53430 can handle all sorts of holds, including the one that's part of the missed approach procedure. All right, that does it for this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about the 530 and 430, and now how it's capable of flying all sorts of RNAV GPS approaches in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.